Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. During these trying times, we all need encouragement and we all need prayer. So let's take a moment while we're in midweek to tune in to a positive persuasion with Reverend Dr. Robert L. Haynes, interim pastor of the St. Paul Baptist Church. Everyone, please be encouraged. St. Paul, I have a surprise for you today. And those of you who don't know her, I told her you're going to become a movie star this week. We have a secretary whom I have met, worked with for the last five years that I have been here. And she has consented to come and be a part of this positive persuasion while we're doing the telecast. Sister Betty Butler, hear her, listen to her, talk to her, and she's the one that has a name behind that phone, behind that voice when you call at the St. Paul Baptist Church. Thank you. Uh, my name is Betty Butler, and I've been at the St. Paul Baptist Church since 1976. That's a long time. <laughs> and I came here, I was invited here by a member. I was looking for a church home uh, because I wanted my son to have a relationship with the church. I wanted, he was in Catholic school and he was finding out about their religion, but I really wanted him to know uh, about the Baptist religion because that's what I grew up in. So it was important to me that he form a relationship with the Lord and that way uh, we could be together and on the same page with it. So my son is, uh, grew up in this church, and so did I. We both got um, our, started off, well, he started off with the religion here, but I belonged to another church as a kid. So I knew a little bit about the Lord. Uh, what I do here at St. Paul, uh, I was parishioner for all those years, but, uh, when uh, the real estate market, I was a real estate agent, went south, uh, I needed a part-time job. And so uh, I uh, made a request for this job. They had an opening as a financial secretary and I was hired. Uh, that was 10 years ago. They say that the coronavirus has changed pretty much everything because I'm here mainly by myself a lot of the times in the, during the day. Uh, we don't get as many phone calls and people don't come by because everybody is uh, doing the stay at home order or following that. But I'm here still doing the same time of the day. So I answer the phone and um, do whatever Whatever comes up, I'm right here and I can handle it. And if I can't, I'll call somebody and get some information on what to do. The computer is here. And I use this computer because I don't have a computer at home. Okay. So I have not seen the telecast, but I have heard, I've had many people to tell me about it and how much they enjoy it and what a great job the Reverend is doing with that. And that's how I, I know as much as I know about it because the other parishioners are telling me. But I look forward to, to seeing it. And my son said I can come to his house and watch if I like. But I, ha I, don't, I haven't visited them since the coronavirus. At least I haven't gone inside his home. I just go to the door and hand them whatever I'm handing them and then I keep going. Again, we are here and you're there and uh, we want to make another uh, presentation of positive persuasion to our viewers, our listeners and uh, we are grateful that uh, we have been given this uh, window of time. I'm going to learn all this high-tech stuff 
over the next uh, year or two. But anyhow, right now, we have this window, and we uh, want to take advantage of it. Um, on last time, we had one of our sons to bring a wonderful thought. Today, I, I want to bring us into something that's contemporary, something that's in the now. Uh, it's superfluous for me to sit and tell you that uh, we live in tumultuous times. We live in difficult, challenging times because you're living in it. But how do I, and notice I'm not going to say you, how do I handle uh, the situation as a Christian? I am a Christian. In this world, in our society, in the United States, Christians, I'm talking about Christians, are the minority. Uh, we might have stamps of Christian in a lot of places, but genuine Christians are in the minority. So, does the minority adapt the ways and the mindset of the majority who are non-Christians? Remember, Jesus came even to those who were in the minority, and he was a minority of the minority in the majority. What do you mean? Well, because my identity ought to, ought to dictate my actions. If, if, if I am a Christian, then I need to have actions that are commensurate with a Christian and what I do, even what I think. Now, I know that there will always be injustice. And some folk gonna turn me off right now. Injustice is a part of this world. It's what it's all about. That's why Jesus comes to us and he says, if the son shall make you free, not legislations, not constitutions, not decrees, not oracles of men. He told us in the Bible, if the Ten Commandments, if the law, the whole Bible, could have saved us, it wouldn't have been no reason for Jesus to come. But he came because you cannot legislate things that are justice. It has to come from the heart. And that's why Jesus comes to us and all the way back, even in the Old Testament, he tells Jeremiah in Jeremiah 33, uh, 31, or 31, 33, that a new heart I will give you, a new spirit I will give you. And so Jesus comes along and he embellishes all of that. He said, if any man be in Christ, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. Now, all of us were born with that old Adamic nature. I don't care how you want to uh, try to fix it. We were all born with the same old rebellious spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, the love of God, and the sacrifice of God in Jesus Christ has to change our hearts. And I don't care how much I want my own justice, my justice, my own justice, will never equate to the love of God. The love of God lays aside all sin, all missing the mark, all errors, all things that are not consistent with him. And he lays it aside. And he said, if you allow me to come and impregnate your heart, give you a new birth, then you will have peace. 
not only will you have peace with yourself, you'll have peace with God and you'll have peace with your fellow man. I know that I cannot stop people from doing what they want to do. I'm an old timer. 1968 got out of the army and there I am on Lock Raven Boulevard. I can't even breathe hardly. And I woke up that morning and saw Baltimore smoking rioting going on and I'm now 75 years old and the cities have not stopped smoking and burning and the hearts of men have not changed except you fall on your knees and cry out for mercy then we will always try to fix a situation that cannot be fixed I don't care how nice you are how much good intent you have how intellectual you are, how spiritual you are, how much common sense you got and have all the other nuances. If Christ the Lord doesn't prick your heart and give you a new attitude, give you a new mind, a new life, then we will have, as my friend Dr. Morton says, we'll have the same soup warm over and over and over again. 1968 has not changed. Martin Luther King Jr., all he did, he was not the panacea for righteousness. He raised the level of awareness, and that's all men will do, raise the level of awareness. But they cannot fix, they cannot fix the problem. Somebody said, take it to Jesus and leave it there. Trust him. And he said, them that come unto me, I will in no wise cast out. I hope, I pray. Maybe not too many young people will hear me. Yes, I've been in marches, been in police cars. Yes, I have been discriminated against, ran out of swimming pool. Yes, there was a forest park. I've been through all of that. I don't go around tooting my horn. I learned to pray. I learned to give it to the Lord. And once I give it to him, it's taken care of. People, the job may not get done when I want it done, but God promised that he's going to fix it. And I'm 75 years old now, and I've been a Christian for 41 years, and there's nothing that I have ever asked him to do that he has not fixed it. I pray that you teach uh, your children, your grandchildren, even yourself, that these are the words coming from God's Son himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. Love your enemy. Do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. And in due time, God will fix it. He'll take care of it. God bless you. Thank you. See you next time. Amen. And I have a little closing remark. I always tell the church, if the, see you if the creek don't rise. And I forget the other part, whatever it was. Hallelujah. God bless you. Bye-bye.